Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here, and uh, welcome to Stumped. So Stumped is the name for our new Q&A video that we're going to put out midweek following a weekend video. Um, just a quick little background information. We got a bunch of comments two weeks ago on a video, so many so that I realized I need to do another video, and I need to add some clarification to some things that I said and left out. So the idea is, let's do two videos a week. On the weekend, we'll do a video with a new topic, and then midweek, put out a video answering your questions and addressing your comments, concerns, cheap shots, and some of the things that I'm gonna leave out. Okay, so let's begin with a question from Question Mark. At least that's how I'm interpreting your name. By the way, I love 96 Tears, so uh, keep up the good work. Um, his questions had to do with the audio being awfully rough. You're right. Um, the first problem I had was uh, two weeks ago, I using this microphone, which is wired, um, I caught it on something midway through my recording and separated this connection. I caught that, so I plugged it back together, thought I was good to go. Well, it turns out I disconnected it up here at the phone as well. And so uh, there was a, a hodgepodge of audio quality. So. Last week, I decided to use some Bluetooth headsets that I use. I love the audio sound on them, but I don't really like the audio sound from them. So we won't be making that mistake again, and uh, hopefully we can get this corrected by our next video. Okay, uh, Thomas K. asked several questions. Um, he asked and, and actually gave me a lot of background information about his concern about sideways motion of this post. Now, he's absolutely right, and there were other comments about the, uh, the little nylon bolt there that really the reason for that is to take side play out so that when you move this post up and down, it doesn't wander side to side. Um, very good point. He sent me pictures of a modification he made to his bandsaw that predates the inclusion of this for, by Shopsmith. And that included him drilling a couple holes here and using some brass machine screws with knobs on them. And so he's able to add additional tension in between adjustments. Pretty clever. Um, he asked a question about something really funky that we can do with the Shopsmith bandsaw. And because I don't have my table back on yet, I'm going to put that off to this weekend's video. So in this weekend's video, we're going to talk about making straight cuts, resawing, and doing something funky, okay? So you're ahead of the, of the game there. He also asked about the spacing of bearings on the post with the black brass set screws. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm butchering what he said. I mentioned that you need to make these adjustments of these brass set screws equally so that you don't throw this arm forward and backwards. And the reason people make this mistake is they will adjust that until they get the gap just right. But if those set screws are offset from one another, as soon as they move it, that bearing either moves forward or away, right? So keeping that, uh, those two adjustments perfectly parallel so that when you slide that up and down, it keeps the bearing spaced perfectly. Um, it was also mentioned on the Facebook Shopsmith Users Group, um, and I'm, yeah, Facebook Shopsmith Owners Group, that the bottom bearing is actually part of the auto track system. I would say, yeah, you're right. It, it would be part of that as well. Uh, Thomas S. noted that his 1960s Craftsman bandsaw looks an awful lot like the Shopsmith bandsaw, and he was curious maybe it was manufactured by the same company. No, that's a good question. I think I know which one you're talking about. Um, no, that was made, yours was made, I believe, by King Sealy. Um, Magna, the company that introduced the Mark, uh, Mark V and, and these uh, various bandsaws, um, they did make tools for Montgomery Ward, and they made the Ward Power Crafter, Power Craft, Power Crafter line. And uh, so there were some standalone tools in that, and the Power Line was another brand that they made but not the uh, Craftsman. Let's see, Rhino Horn posted that, uh, oh, he's the one that mentioned the audio being rough. Sorry, yes, Rhino Horn, you're correct. 
um, Expedia Cruise Ship Centers of Bellevue, who then went on to say, oh, dang it, I didn't mean to post from that. I do that all the time. <laughs> you get logged into the wrong channel, and that's the way it works. Um, he has an old Shopsmith bandsaw and a new Shopsmith bandsaw. His old one has the old rollers that have the bronze bushing. And he was curious, uh, first off, they had grooves worn into them due to time and, and use. And uh, should they be replaced? Yeah, they should be replaced. I mean, if, if the blade is able to run in that groove, not only is that affecting where it runs on the wheels, but uh, it's going to potentially damage the back edge of your blade. So much so that uh, Thomas K pointed out that on a similar set of rollers that he has, he was getting a little hook, almost like on a cabinet scraper, that was affecting his cut. So yeah, definitely consider replacing that. Um, and then so the, the, the question that was asked by two people, um, and that was, should, is it worth replacing those old rollers with the new ball bearings? I think so. I think it's a great upgrade. Um, if you ask me, should I upgrade the table system from the old cast iron table to the new aluminum table, that's an altogether different question. We'll talk about that some other time. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely get the ball bearing rollers. Those are available from Shopsmith. Let me see, got, got some notes here. Oh, question mark asked, um, do you have to slow the Mark V down every single time before you turn it off? Great question. Um, okay, there's, there's a lot of wisdom as to why you might want to do it. Um, it. It draws a fair amount of current anyway, but it, it, it draws more amps at startup. And the more load you have on the machine, the more amps it requires. Now, if you happen to have a dedicated uh, circuit on that one receptacle in your, in your shop and you're not running on an extension cord, you could probably start and stop your machine at any speed, no problem. But share that circuit with a dust collector or an air compressor or any other tool that might be running uh, put an extension cord on it, and especially if it's longer than it needs to be, if it's a smaller gauge than it should be, then you should get in the habit of lowering the speed down. Does it have to go all the way to slow? No. In my experience, just bring it down a ways. The other really good reason why you might want to be in the habit of slowing it down is if you step away from your machine, days pass, and you come back, and you were doing some operation at a high speed, and you're not thinking and you plug the machine into uh, the bandsaw or any slow speed tool and you turn it on, you might damage it. I stood next to a man who was selling me some equipment who turned on a belt sander that was connected to the uh, Mark V that was set at table saw speed. And before I could react, the, um, the sleeve on the drive drum expanded, caught onto the dust collector chute, destroyed the rubber sleeve, destroyed the dust collector chute, and embarrassed this guy well, to the point where he lowered the price on it. So, <laughs> And uh, I wasn't too upset. But those are, those are things that can happen. Get in the habit of slowing it down and you won't ever regret that. I guess the last comment I want to comment on here is from Polly Collins. I know you love me. I get it all the time. But uh, we've got to stop meeting like this. All right. Thanks for joining me for uh, Stumped. And... Uh, I'll see you this weekend for a new video. Again, we're going to actually do some cutting on the bandsaw. Won't that be cool? Make it a great week.